This is Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy. He's an acquired taste, but once I really got into the film, I loved what I saw. And I think we have to take our time with this one because it does not come easy. The reminder, though, is we're not scouting based off of the college production. We're scouting about how this is going to translate multiple years into the future at the next level. And I think that J.J. McCarthy, we are underselling his athletic traits, his arm talent, and then some of these clutch situations where he really balled out. Fascinating. My favorite part of these videos is Hayden has no idea what I'm going to say, and I have no idea what Hayden's going to say. So you all get to be here at the genesis of the conversation. Some numbers that matter. JJ McCarthy is six, two and a half, 219 pounds, arguable, maybe some water weight in there at the NFL combine, a uh, 91st percentile three cone, 72nd percentile shuttle. And Hayden, he's like on the verge of being 21 years old yeah. just yeah. now. So there is time to grow and especially muscular, the thickness mm -hmm. of what JJ McCarthy brings to the table. Let's talk about the situation. Okay. Michigan really freaking good. And definitely good the last two years. What he was 27 and one, 28 and one over his last two seasons, his only loss being the national championship semifinal in one year. Uh, we know that the defense that Harbaugh recruited and put out there in the field, fantastic. Uh, the offensive line, just sensational. And so because of that, Hayden, what we get is a really pro style offense, under center, deep play action, attacking areas of the field that NFL off offense love. And so I think, like you said, it's really easy to fall in love with what you see on the tape because your brain reverts back to what you see on Sundays. And for the best offenses and many of the best quarterbacks, you see almost the exact same things. Well, I think most people are saying, I didn't see enough of it. That means I'm totally out. He can't do these things. And I think if you're only watching three games, well, there's probably only like 12 or 13 throws in those two, three games where you're like, wow, that is something that we have to really pay attention to. But if you watch the entire course of the season, as I did, you start stacking some of the good with the bad, and there's a whole lot more of the good. So let's get to that. The classic timing routes, slants, comebacks, digs, curls, outs, those type of routes. He had the best EPA in the class on those. Inside the pocket, throwing it on time with good accuracy in the intermediate and short part of the field, he's got it. And then there was also times because you said they run the ball so often where <laughs> it's run, run. Well, they didn't go anywhere this time. Now it's third and six or beyond that. And he had 10.9 yards per pass on those best in the class there. Yep. And even though he didn't have the raw uh, production like some of these other quarterbacks had, he still actually led the class on middle of the field attempts on digs and crossing routes. That's a total number. He had more of these digs and crossing routes over the middle of the field because he actually plays in an offense that you'll somewhat see in the NFL, in particular with the Shanahan scheme. So while he's not getting the bubble screens and the, and the little RPO passes to inflate some of these numbers, he's not going to be wowing you down the field. A lot of the, the stuff that we take for granted at the next level, I think J.J. McCarthy does at a really high rate. And I think that what you mentioned, he's going to grow more because he's so young. And I think a lot of his weaknesses are tied to just that he's like physically immature. He does not have the touch because I think he has to really step into throws. And I think as he gets stronger, he's not going to have to yeah. have those huge windups and like throwing it with his entire body. And I think some of the accuracy issues that we'll see on some parts of the field, I think that can get fixed as well. So I think it's a good starting point for him. It just takes a long time to fully digest what he's actually good at. A lot to unpack there. And just like in our Drake May video, and hopefully you've watched that, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button. Um, we talked about comparing a quarterback that has two years as a starter at the college level versus guys that have played in legitimately six college football yeah. seasons. And it's not just the physical development that, you know, the Bo Nixes, the Michael Penixes, the Jane Daniels of the world, mm -hmm. uh, who, you know, was in four. Um, it's also the mental development on top of it. You see more coverages, you understand blitz packages, you say, oh, this leverage situation, I can throw it here, here, here. Obviously, JJ McCarthy, Drake May in a much different bucket, but we have to rank them. We have to, mm -hmm. you know, stack them up against each other and compare their traits. I do want to touch on a little bit more the situation that he's in. Producer Weaves pulled this up. I think it's from one of our buddies, Pat Corain, only 53% of JJ McCarthy's games last year, he had 25 plus dropbacks. Okay. Yep. No other prospect in this class had less than 92%, right? Mm -hmm. He only had one game that had 35 plus dropbacks all of last season. There's a great follow on Twitter, Dynasty Zoltan, who had a great thread about JJ McCarthy. This is a quarterback in his college career who only had 91 attempts in the fourth quarter. Only wow. 38 of his total attempts in the second half, 14% in the fourth quarter. His halftime deficits as a career starter, two. 
Two, uh, average halftime lead, 11 points. Average third quarter lead, 19 points. So Hayden, mm -hmm. again, if we're getting this comparison game, all of these different quarterbacks were in very different situations. It's easy to say, maybe not from a wide receiver standpoint, but from an offensive line, defense, just team success standpoint, J.J. McCarthy was in the best situation. So we haven't seen him do, in my opinion, what is the big separator of great quarterbacks in the league when everything is going to shit, when mm -hmm. you need to make the play for us and be perfect for an entire quarter and carry your team out of a hole to the mountaintop. We haven't seen him like put the team on his back yet because he hasn't had to yet. And so I'm not saying he can't. He just really hasn't had to at this time. It depends on your definition. If it's while trailing in a comeback situation, yeah, he hasn't done that. But if it's just this is a pressure situation, you need to make a big play in a tough environment. Well, then third and six plus like those are tough environments. Your point on if you go back and watch the isolated plays after this offense was built on first and second down runs and they got to third and five plus situations, yeah. they really should be called like McCarthy time yeah. because he was sensational, maybe right. even the best in this class yeah. in those third and five plus situations. And those are, as you were saying, got to have it pure passing mm -hmm. situations that the defense knows that you are throwing the football. And he was exceptional in that environment. Right. And then if he's not dealing it with like total raw production, his per play numbers are really good. EPA per play, 93rd percentile among drafted quarterbacks, the quarterback rating 95th percentile. And then like the total rushing is in the 63rd uh, percentile when it comes to rushing EPA. And I think there were some situations where in you have to have it situations, he would actually scramble around, pick up a couple of things at the goal line. You can do a couple quarterback design stuff in short yarded situations, and he's a good athlete while doing that. I think that's probably one of the underrated parts about J.J. McCarthy's game to me is he's, he was a five-star recruit. He went to the IMG Academy, he actually played Bishop Sycamore um, back in the day, that, that fake high school team. They played them in IMG Academy, but he's a good, loose athlete, and you see this on the run. He, when he's throwing it on the run, he really could spin it with good accuracy, a tight spiral out there. You can get him on the, the bootlegs. You see this play action stuff, Shanahan type of scheme. You can already picture how him moving outside the pocket where I think people want to say he's only Kirk Cousins. I think that J.J. McCarthy and Kirk Cousins are not in the same bucket athletically. I think that J.J. McCarthy, while he's not Drake May, and Caleb Williams, or Jaden Daniels, certainly not that. But he's he's in, he's in a tier above Baker Mayfield and those sides. Kind of like in that Ryan Tannehill type of sphere here where I think you can get enough of them. You're not going to ask him to do it a ton, but I think there's some situations where you actually can make some plays outside of the pocket. I am not calling him Ryan Tannehill athletically. Ryan Tannehill was like a college football wide receiver and then obviously mm -hmm. switched to quarterback. In fact, I, I'm with you. If we talk about like his athleticism, again, 91st percentile three cone, 72nd percentile shuttle. Those are the only athletic measurements we have with J.J. McCarthy, and those are fantastic stuff. Mm -hmm. I saw it a lot when he was climbing the pocket, and actually his scramble rate, I believe, is almost neck and neck with Caleb Williams, who everyone views at times as just a scrambler, right. which is also totally wrong. There were times when I he was asked to retreat and then exit out of the back of the pocket where I thought his athleticism or lack thereof showed up. Like, he would get caught, he would those pressures return to sack more often than I thought. The third and five plus stuff is what I'm always going to go back to. Pure passing situations, he nailed it. Again, it can be difficult to hold this perfect college team against him, but I think it's very easy to believe that whatever team he walks into in the NFL, comparatively from leagues, it's going to be in a much, much worse spot. What happens once he does have to have to try to carry a game from start to finish because we've seen it with literally every single other quarterback in this draft right. class and we haven't seen it with him. Right. I, I will say, I think that Michigan's receiving cores was very underwhelming compared to like what LSU had and some of like Stroud had and some of these best quarterbacks. You can't even compare them. Roman Wilson's going to be a fine slot wide receiver, but pretty limited at that. You can't even name the outside wide receiver. So I think that JJ McCarthy is going to be able to play with some better wide receiver talent. We'll see what he can do beyond that. But yeah, the, the Michigan stuff, like they were winning in all these ball games. Also, when Harbaugh had Andrew Luck, the best quarterback prospect that you've evaluated, they didn't throw the ball very much. When the 49ers were going crazy, they weren't throwing the ball very much. So maybe we can look at this and be like, well, Harbaugh is just this complete outlier coach and that maybe in a different system we actually see jj mccarthy develop i think that for him to develop there's a couple things 
that I want to see him do. There's some mechanical issues potentially throwing to his left in particular where he's not throwing the ball as often can kind of sail some passes. I think some of his accuracy problems, and I think sometimes when he's not throwing with as much touch, I think it's because he was pretty light. I think it goes back to the age thing where he would have to completely step into throws. And I just want him to get stronger over the next couple of years, which I think is like not that crazy of an expectation. Yep. We just saw it from the pre-draft process. He weighed in more at the combine than people were expecting. He needs to be able to do that to avoid more sacks. He needs to avoid some injuries. But I think that some of these accuracy and arm talent issues, there's some throws down the field that just simply were completely out of bounds or just way too flat. And yeah. you can't have that. There's some layered throws where he's throwing with the line drive too often. He needs to size up. And then maybe we can get to the more touch, more boundary type of throws. And that's a projection. But I think that we have to either take the old quarterbacks that we've seen it and they're 24 years old, or we have to play this projection game. And historically, totally. the younger quarterbacks are the ones that you can actually project forward. And those guys typically have better results. I know I'm somewhat taking like the negative tone here. I really mm -hmm. like JJ McCarthy as a player. I think yeah. he will be a top five pick in the NFL draft. And I think a lot of it goes back to how... NFL coaches, and many of them, it almost blurs the lines of who is making the decision, especially when it mm -hmm. comes to the quarterback position, as we get closer and closer to the NFL draft. They're going to watch Michigan's offense and see, again, that it's structurally an NFL offense. Like, how many times did Jaden Daniels take a snap from under center, go Never. deep play action, and seven-step drop and rip it over the middle of the field? Never. I mean, you could – Drake May probably did it two dozen times. Caleb Williams – probably never, never. You can go over and over and the execution on top of that is yeah. top notch and like we hear it from that entire tree the the shanahan and maybe less or so mcveigh sections branches of oh they just want a guy at quarterback who they can be like the controller of and they just execute what the offense is on paper and for jj everything is in rhythm you know he makes quick decisions and even when abandoning the play and he'll fit passes into tight windows and i think from the other quarterback videos that we've done and talking about quarterbacks on sundays too we obsess over that middle of the field stuff and no one's gonna be better at it off the rip mm -hmm. than what jj mccarthy already is but at the same time he's probably the worst of the top four outside the numbers as you said just 16 percent of his passes this past season were to the left side of the field 19 percent to the right side of the field. So he, again, doesn't have that many reps of these big time outside the number downfield throws that actually a lot of these other quarterbacks in this draft class do have a lot of experience with. Yeah, it, it's very interesting offense because there was a lot of times where it would be a quick out where he's throwing the ball only like to the sideline, but only like six, seven yards downfield. I think those throws are so hard to make. You have to throw with a lot of trust. And if you're, ac if you're uh, not accurate, by just a little bit, those can be pick sixes. And I thought that Heath had to throw a lot more out routes. He had to throw a lot more in-breaking routes, a lot more crossing routes, where your accuracy, because they're running across the field, you only have a little bit of a bucket before it's on the back shoulder and stuff. And I think that some of these accuracy issues are a little bit based off just the, the type of throws. A back shoulder throw, you have a way bigger of a window to kind of miss versus some of these like timing routes. And I think that J.J. McCarthy was asked to do a whole lot of those. And like you said, 35% of his throws we're over the middle. That's but that's the best in this class by a by a wide margin. So I think what I'm willing to do here is I'm think I'm more willing to project forward. I think he's gonna get bigger. I think that his arm talent is gonna speak through. And I think that he's just a better athlete than people give him credit for. That one play against yeah. Bama where he caught that ball with one hand, spun and threw it downfield on that flea flicker. I mean, come on. There's just a lot more uh kind of traits I think people are underestimating. My primary comp, I think Alex Smith is a very good comp for him. Alex Smith before the leg injury and stuff was a, a pretty mobile quarterback. And then I think most people don't like that do content. They're scared to make crazy projections and stuff. But I think like two, three, four years, I don't see why JJ McCarthy couldn't become some version of Joe Burrow. Obviously Joe Burrow as a prospect was already doing this repeatedly at LSU, but I don't think there's anything that negative about JJ's game that Joe see, Burrow hasn't been able to uh, kind of work around in his game. The offense that Joe Burrow wants to run the NFL is like vastly different than the one that JJ McCarthy is doing right. now. And so like, again, it's the projection thing because mm -hmm. Joe doesn't want to work from under center. He doesn't want to turn his head to the defense. He wants everything to be in shotgun and he wants to carry the passing game from right. start to finish. But those third and six plays, those weren't play action plays. Those were just regular drop back plays. And I think I saw a lot of reps like yeah. that where I can actually see him. It's all on him and he's actually not just doing the, the Shanahan Brock Purdy type of thing. And I want to repeat, I am obsessed with those third and five mm -hmm. plus situations too. Because again, 
it was, we have to throw. The defense knows we have to throw. And Michigan knew and relied and trusted JJ to work in those situations. Mm -hmm. And that was a big reason why they were winning those yep. football games. I guess my question from a comp standpoint is, is he just going to be an EPA Lord? You know, is he an EPA Lord like Brock Purdy? And you're not a big Brock Purdy fan. And actually right. to me, JJ McCarthy and Brock Purdy have quite similar games and similar environments right now. If right. you take college to the sure. NFL. Sure. I think the big difference between Brock Purdy and JJ McCarthy is I think that Brock Purdy kind of has a little bit of scatter brain to his his game where it, it sometimes works out and it's better than the Jimmy G, Jimmy G thing where it's just one thing at all times. I think JJ McCarthy is a good blend of that where he is athletic enough to buy some times like what Brock Purdy does. But I think that he just plays under pressure and more poise than Brock Purdy does. And I think that over time, JJ McCarthy's athletic traits will just completely be in a different conversation than what Brock Purdy does. So this this is not a, an easy thing, an easy video for no. me, but I think that he's going to be a very good quarterback in, in the NFL. Um, obviously, it takes a lot of projections. I don't think most people are afraid of that. Uh, and he easily can bust, and I can look like a fool here. But I really do think that JJ McCarthy, I was hunting for weaknesses, and some of most of the weaknesses just kept coming down to the inexperience or or just the his lack of physical development. And to me, if that's all we have to do in the next couple couple years here, I think I can see a really good football player here. Yeah. I, again, I don't want to blame him for this, but an environment where your team can run thirty two straight times, basically against Penn State other than like one incomplete pass that was pass interference jammed mm -hmm. in there at some point. Like that's just totally a unique right. environment versus anyone else that we're talking about here. What do you think was, and obviously that's the, the context here is it makes it very com complicated. I hear you on all that type of stuff. What is, what is his real weakness, not environment when you're watching, you're yeah. like, that is just his weakness right there. Just off, just by himself. I don't know what his special skill is. Okay. Because I think top 12 quarterbacks season in season out. And I'm not talking week to week rankings where, you know, right. team success. I think he can be a very successful quarterback in the NFL, but I don't know if his team is going to be, of like, course not. Yeah. The like his team is not going to be an end product of him. If that makes sense. Right. Right. Yeah, I you're think not he can be undefeated. <laughs> yeah. But the special skill part is what separates the quarterbacks from successful quarterbacks, I guess is my thing. And I am searching for that special skill that takes him into the elites. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, there's, to me, there's a difference between like when we were doing our Caleb video, I was like, he can go compete with Josh Allen and Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. JJ McCarthy's not gonna be able to do that. Could he go compete with Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott and that type here, of tier? I, I think so. Okay. Here's a question. He might be the quarterback three in this class. He might be drafted as the quarterback three in this class. Mm -hmm. I see far more special skills from Anthony Richardson last year, who was drafted yeah. to the quarterback three yeah. versus JG McCarthy, who might be drafted to the quarterback three in this. Class. Yeah, I, I would have Anthony Richardson as the quarterback two in this class. And then I'm still debating where I have McCarthy as the three or the two, but we'll have a quarterback rankings video that we can go figure it out in a good environment. This will be a really good quarterback because he executes things and is exactly the correct decisions that mm -hmm. the coach wants him to do. Like if it would just be a drastically different rookie season from him, yeah. if he goes to, let's say the Minnesota Vikings versus sure. the new England Patriots, I wouldn't hate if he sat there for the entire season or a half season and let him actually physically develop and learn some other parts of the game. I wouldn't hate that too. I think that he can both be a, a very good prospect and also might not see the field in week one because he develops, but that's the, that's the risk and we're playing for upside. So the thing I just don't like about the NFL draft stuff is when people are like, I would take him really high up in the draft, but I have a day two grade on him and stuff. Like we, we, we are the, either in or we are out. Yeah, I'm in. All right. That does it. Absolutely love long conversations like this. And if you want to check out the rest of the quarterback prospects, uh, one, go watch JJ McCarthy's third and five plus plays, because again, if you are skeptical, that'll turn you around a little bit. You have to dig for them, but definitely do your homework and go watch those. Do your own research. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to, in the description of this video, I, I put out a little compilation of him making some plays out of structure as a, as a yeah. scrambler. Go watch those too. Yeah, it's 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Go to watch the rest of my videos, hit subscribe, hit thumbs up, and we will check you all next time.
<laughs> what was I going to say? Um, I have nothing. Okay. We'll just end it there.